and gentlemen, Norman Williams said, Under no circumstances should family worship be omitted. We're on the road today. My entire family is with me. All seven of my children are with me for my last two children's uh, Bible Bee, National Bible Bee. And uh, we're all together. My oldest daughters uh, uh, have uh, joined in and uh, have traveled with us down in San Antonio land. And so we're in a, a different environment. Uh, and so by the grace of God, however, we're not going to omit this most important time of our day. He goes on to say, if we would enjoy the blessings of God upon our family, then let its members gather together daily for praise and prayer. Them that honor me, I will honor. Allow me to repeat that in your hearing. Them that honor me, I will honor is the promise from God. Now do your part. <clears throat> Holy Father God, help every family that names the name of Christ across this country, around the globe, to get back to the family altar, to get back to family devotions. For it is the power that keeps the family together and the power that causes the family to make progress and to do great things for your glory, praise, and honor, even when the family is not a perfect family at all. And so, Lord, we give you the glory, praise, and honor for this uh, privilege to pray together as a family each and every day. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, help us to do it. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, recite with me or read with me the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Daniel, focus. I believe in God the Father Almighty. <clears throat> the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, <clears throat> The third day he arose again from the dead. He was seen alive by Mary, Magdalene, and the other women, the disciples, and over 500 other brethren. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our devotional Bible reading this morning is Psalm 51, 1 through 6. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Some of us today uh, in the Christian family need to do what David did. Acknowledge your sins, your failures, your faults 
and confess them to God and repent. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. We got Christians today who won't even acknowledge their transgressions. We have homosexuals today who get mad at the church because we even classify their sin as sin, which they, which they know is sin. But we got Christians in the church who won't even acknowledge their sins. We'll condemn homosexuals but commit adultery and fornication. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Against thee, and he said they will be, uh, allow me to share that with you, uh, that last verse again. He said, and my sin is ever before me. See, that's the sad thing about sin. Unconfessed sin will be forever uh, before you. You'll be guilty, feeling guilty, until you acknowledge it and confess it and uh, repent of it. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. David was not messing around. He sinned greatly, but as someone said in the past, he confessed and repented greatly. Amen, somebody. And David was not messing around. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. I'm on your side, God, against my sin. And that's the position that God wants all of us to take. Stop trying to make uh, God agree with you in your sin. As we read yesterday, he's not like you. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Dr. Matthew Henry wrote in his fine commentary, the best devotional commentary ever written, in my opinion. He said, David being convinced of his sin, yea, convicted of his sin, poured out his soul to God in prayer for mercy and grace. And may I say to you, that's what you better do. I don't care what your gutter snipe sin is, rebelliousness, stubbornness, meanness, lying, dishonesty, deceit, adultery, lust, pornography, calling Ashley Madison. Uh, I don't care what it is. Prostitution, homosexuality, uh, stealing. You need to break down like David who no doubt made one of the most powerful confessions and uh, apologies to God ever pinned down. And God continued to bless him. Still called him a man after my own heart. Why? Because he was transparent. And by the way, I believe one of the marks of a true Christian particularly one who has grown a while, who's been saved a while, is honesty and transparency. Not lying, not covering up, not hiding stuff, telling the truth and eager to be transparent about it. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God, amen, somebody. Now back to the text. Whither should backsliding children return but to the Lord their God, who alone can heal them? David drew up an account of the workings of his heart toward God. Those that truly repent of their sins will not be ashamed. Can somebody say amen? to own their repentance. Also, he instructs others what to do and what to say. David had not only done much, but suffered much 
in the cause of God, yet he flees to God's infinite mercy and depends upon that alone, that alone, God's mercy for pardon and peace. See, one of the reasons why you want to confess your sins and repent and acknowledge your sins, we got people who won't even acknowledge that they are tempted. Get these people away from me. They're liars. They're cheats. They're not even tempted with sin. Oh, I, since I've been saved, I've never thought of that. You're a liar. Oh, I've, I've never been tempted with some of the old ways I had in the, in the, back in the day. You're a liar. Get away from me. But we have folk like that in the church who sit in lines and won't even acknowledge not only sin, but temptation. And you can't even begin to have revival until you're willing to confess your sins and repent. Back to the text. He begs the pardon of sin, the blood of Christ, sprinkled upon the conscience, blots out the transgression, and having reconciled us to God, reconciles us to ourselves. <clears throat> I don't have time to deal with uh, that this morning. I have some hungry children who want to beat the clock and get that free breakfast at the beautiful hotel that we're in right now. So they're looking at me and say, don't you, don't you keep, don't you, don't you go off on that. This, we're thinking eggs and sausage. The believer longs to have the whole debt of his sins blotted out. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> and every stain cleansed. He would be thoroughly washed from all his sins. But the hypocrite always, watch this now, the hypocrite always has some secret reserve. <laughs> Hear me well. The hypocrite, the phony, always has some secret sin in reserve and would have some favorite lust spared. My God, my God, may God help you. You hypocrites, you gutter snipes, you phonies, you fakes, whoever you may be. <clears throat> God's got your number. You got a sweet thing in reserve. Nobody knows about it, you think, but God knows about it. The angels know about it. All your people, all you peeps up in heaven know about it. So join me now in praying for the estates. We do this based upon the word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Holy Father God, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, financial, material, physical, life blessings, protection blessings upon our president and all of his administration. We also pray that you give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight, uh, and uh, integrity in all that they say and do. We pray these blessings upon him, Vice President Mike Pence, First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady Karen Pence, presidential aides such as Deputy Counsel to the President Stephen C. Apostantino, leaders of federal agencies such as Secretary of Agriculture Sonny Perdue, and we pray for all state governors, uh, South Dakota Governor Dennis Doggard, all mayors, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska Mayor Chris uh, Butler, and all senators, Texas Senator John Cornyn, U.S. Representatives, California Representative Adam Schiff. 
We pray for all police chiefs. We pray for Greensboro North uh, Kakilake Police Chief Wayne Scott, my one of my home states in a city that I frequented back in the day. We also pray for all sheriffs. El Paso, El Paso County, Texas, my home state now, Sheriff Richard Wiles, and uh, military leaders. We thank you for them. We pray for General Curtis M. Uh, Scott Parati, Commander of U.S. European Command and Supreme Allied Commander Europe. <clears throat> Pardon me. And we pray for all law enforcement officials across this country and around the globe. We pray for the leaders of nations around the world. We pray for Guatemala's President Jimmy Morales and give him the same kind of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight that we are praying for our own president. We pray for all church leadership across this country and around the globe. Save those who are religious but lost. Revive those who are saved. We pray for Free Methodist Church, uh, Bishop David Kendall, Bishop Matthew Thomas, and Bishop David Roller. <coughs> uh, pardon me. And Holy Father God, we pray for all current events around the world. We pray for the families of the uh, one person, uh, killed and two law enforcement officers killed amid violence between protesters in Charlottesville, Virginia. Comfort these families as only you can and comfort this country as only you can after seeing such a shocking display of evil and foolishness. And we pray for the recovery of all people wounded for some are fighting for their lives we pray for peace and harmony to re to prevail in this uh, curse uh, in this country that is being cursed by uh, wickedness, evil, pride, and uh, racism. And Holy Father God, we pray for the families of the 34 people killed in a bus crash in China, and for the recovery of the 13 wounded. We pray for the 50 migrants who were drowned by migrant smugglers in the Sea of Aden for protection and provision for all migrants uh, who are seeking better living situations in new lands. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem based upon your holy word. Psalm 122, 6, which says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. We pray for persecuted Christians around the globe. Comfort them as only you can. Give them your grace in their trying hours and in some cases their dying hours. We pray for all of the, all media. We pray for uh, salvation, spiritual, and life blessings upon these people. We pray that you'll lead God and direct them to report the news and not to make the news. We pray for uh, CNN anchors Chris Como, Poppy Hollow, uh, as well as Don Lemon. We pray that you would uh, open their blinded eyes and stop their deaf ears and save their souls, those who are lost. We also pray uh, for the prayer requests that have come in. We pray for uh, Dolores, uh, have 100% of her Social Security benefits. Uh, to be released in all finances that she is owed to be released as soon as possible. Provide her with her own place to live and save her children. Uh, we pray for Jordan. Provide him and his family with a financial breakthrough so they can meet all obligations, including rent, food, and uh, utilities. Have doors to open for them so they can move out of Las Vegas to a place where you will lead them. We pray for David, deliver Elena from all problems, and be with her 11 children. We pray for Daniel, provide for their charity and church planting ministry. We pray for Anne, give her a financial uh, breakthrough. We pray for Jonathan, provide him a permanent job. 
We pray for Jean. Help her to receive your forgiveness uh, and not to be destroyed by self-condemnation. Give her closure in her life. We pray for Annie. Help her uh, two sons, Solomon and Kyla, to find salvation and have your will to be done in their lives. We pray for Zanani. Give her healing from a divorce. Bless her financially. Provide a safe home for her and her son and a safe daycare for her son. We pray for Natasha. Help her to get her life right with you and have a better relationship with you. Show her how to get back on the right track. And Lord, we pray now for all of the people who have gotten saved through the ministry and uh, who have rededicated their life to you. We only call out uh, a portion of the names and we pray for Clems, we pray for Isaac, we pray for John, we pray for Franz, we pray for Ogamodisi, we pray for Bobby, and we pray for Shinwi. And we also pray for the people who have recommitted their lives to you. Uh, we pray for Iber, we pray for Susan, we pray for Abua, we pray for Musisi, we pray for Samuel, we pray for Prosper, and we pray for Ishwar. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, our devotional reading for today is Jesus in the Rainbow by Dr. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon goes on to say, the rainbow, the symbol of the covenant with Noah, is typical of our Lord Jesus, who is the Lord's witness to the people. When may we expect to see the token of the covenant? The rainbow is only to be seen, painted upon a cloud, when the sinner's conscience is dark with clouds, when he remembers his past sin and mourneth and lamenteth before God, Jesus Christ is revealed to him as the covenant rainbow, displaying all of the glorious, pardon me, displaying all of the glorious hues of the divine character and betokening peace to the believer when his trials and temptations surround him it is sweet to behold the person of our lord jesus christ to see him bleeding living rising and pleading for us god's rainbow is hung over the cloud of our sins our sorrows and our woes to prophesy deliverance. To have a rainbow, there must also be a sun for clouds and drops of rain. Make not rainbows unless the sun shineth. Beloved, our God, who is as the sun to us, always shines, but we do not always see him. Clouds hide his face, but no matter what drops may be falling or what clouds may be threatening, if he does but shine, there will be a rainbow at once. It is said that when we see the rainbow, the shower is over. Certain it is that when Christ comes, our troubles remove when we behold Jesus, our sins vanish and our doubts and fears subside. When Jesus walks the waters of the sea, how profound the calm. Can somebody say amen? Holy Father God, we pray this morning 
In the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your love, and your grace. And in loving us so much, you sent your holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, to be buried, and to rise again. No matter what we might be going through, Lord, it is true and it is amazing. If we really think about that, it's all right. So help us to keep our hearts and minds stayed upon you. Keep us, therefore, in perfect peace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, beloved, before I leave you on this beautiful Sunday morning, if you do not yet know the Lord Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins, and Jesus Christ as your Savior, Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible also says in Romans 10.9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear friend, if you want to be saved today, it is very simple. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou, you, shalt be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again, acknowledging that you are a sinner and that you have sinned against God, understanding that if you don't trust Christ as Savior, the sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, as your Savior, uh, who took away the sins of the world, your sins and mine, then you would have to pay for your sins yourself in a place called hell. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, today. And pray and ask him to save your soul, and I'll be glad to lead you in that prayer. It's called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, wherever you are. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done wrong in my life in your sight. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. That he died for me. Was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you pray that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Bible, you are now saved from sin and hell and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospelightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer.
as loud as possible. Don't let this world mislead you. Don't you ever go astray. Trust in God's word and believe it, because it will never pass away. We'll see him in his glory, riding on the clouds of joy, greeting us with open arms.